Good evening, and thank you for joining my live tele-town hall. And while we wait for a few other persons to join us, I want to give some important information. Of course, very important, whoever you vote for, it's very important that you know that early voting begins this Thursday, June 12th to June 19th, and then uh, the final election day is June 24th. I'd like for you to also feel free to visit my website at www.senatormuse.com. If you know of someone that lives in the 26th district and is going to attend college, a college or university in the state of Maryland, please have them download my senatorial scholarship application. Uh, we've extended the deadline until June 30th. And then lastly, uh, as a part of what we've been doing with many smaller groups or individual groups throughout this entire campaign, if you would join me this Saturday for a uh, Prince George's County 26th District Women uh, for, for Muse fundraiser hosted by my beautiful wife, Pat Lawson Muse, and the Honorable Congresswoman Donna Edwards and former Councilwoman, the Honorable Dorothy Bailey. The Women for Muse fundraiser will be held at Joplin's Restaurant, which is a small local and minority restaurant. Tickets are $20, and you can uh, certainly call uh, 301-538-5581 for additional information, or you can email me, muse at senatormuse.com. I see others have joined us, and so I want to get right into a couple of reasons that I've asked you to join me here tonight of course, you'll be getting information as it will be coming to you uh, soon, but I wanted to talk to you first. Uh, it appears that uh, some big labor bosses of SEIU uh, are taking their members' dues without even asking for their permission and using it as their own for their own benefits. And I'm not going to get in the mud that they are slinging, but I'm going to um, certainly uh, look at some of the issues, uh, because if you look at the bottom of all the trash mail that they sent out and see who sent it, you'll notice that they, do, they do not live here. These New York mobsters have been under investigation from Maryland to Chicago to California, uh, and they would, they would slap a negative word over the cross on a mailer. I mean, it, it just have no respect whatsoever. Not only that, if you look in the Baltimore Sun and other newspapers, Washington Post, Baltimore Sun, you will find that not the SCIU workers, this is not about those who work for SCIU. This is about the bosses who collect their dues and collect their dues, and as they collect their dues, they continue to use their dues money at their own for their own causes. For their own causes. They continue to do that, and in doing so, uh, they have decided to uh, enrich themselves. If you look at it, you look at the authority line again, SEIU New York has never, has never set foot in the 26th district, not to mention it's the leadership. And when I say leadership, I mean three to five people who run and control our state. They run and control our state. They want me out. I love the community I serve. I get along with my committee members and Senate and, co and county uh, colleagues. And this is why I've been able to have 40, 40 pieces of legislation passed into law. The problem is they, wanna, they, they do not want me because they want a senator to go back and write laws allowing them to change the laws relative to the casino. They want that money reallocated in other ways and not to the community. They want a puppet, and in 12 years, keep this in mind, Veronica Turner has only passed one bill, and that one bill, what is a bill? A bill is simply a way that you get the ideas of your community, you, you, take the, you make sure that your priorities are in order, Budgetary priorities are in order so that you can pay for what is good for a community. She's only passed one bill, and that bill benefited the labor bosses of SEIU. And by the way, Veronica Turner is on the payroll of those who are sending you the email. She's been employed by them for over 30 years. So let me quickly address their negative mailers against me and my wife. And I am livid 
that they would have the nerve to drag my wife and our 94-year-old dad into this. My wife was reared, my wife was reared in Las Vegas, and the house they are referring to on their mailers in Las Vegas has been her parents' house for 70-plus years, even before I was born. Her dad still lives in that house, but yet they give the assumption that we own a house in Vegas. That shows how ruthless they are. We do not own four properties. They're absolutely wrong. My wife's salary was not garnished. Come on, she's been working for 30 years. How dare they lie on her? She didn't ask to be in this race. I did. And to go after your family members, that's below the belt, and that's wrong. How dare they say that two churches have gone bankrupt? No two churches were ever in bankruptcy. That's a lie. The first church to which they refer, I simply served. I served for 15 years, and I resigned. I simply did not want to be in that denomination any longer. And they won't tell you that there were three pastors. Three pastors after me, Reverend Henderson, Pastor Forrest Stith, and Pastor Rodney Smothers, three pastors after me, and they blame me. Three pastors. That's crazy. How can you blame me? And then they decided, that congregation decided to sell their church, and they sold it to Pastor Michael Freeman, and they located in a smaller building because the congregation was no longer large. And to address the last point they made, as a result of the recession, the market went down. Property values went down. Our church had a loan that was interest only, just like they did in our entire 26th district, being the district with more foreclosures than anywhere else. They did the same to churches. They gave us an interest only loan and told us they would change it. They pushed our backs into a corner. And they said, sign up again for another year at $70,000 a month, interest only. Our congregation decided they weren't going to do that. The congregation took a vote with hundreds of persons there, and we did what Donald Trump did. We made a business decision to reorganize. If you come to our church Sunday or go anytime, you'll see it's being reconstructed. It's under construction. And guess what? No bank loan. We're in our building. The building, we're, the church is growing, and we're having to remodel the entire building. That's what you'll see. I put my entire life and, and, and my savings. They won't tell you that according to the Washington Post and according to the court document that we gave over $636,000 of our money because we love the church and we love the community. My wife and I have worked jobs. We both work outside of the church. Let me say that again. We both work outside of the church. And for them to say we took church money when we have salaries outside of the church, that's wrong. One other. They say I voted against jobs. Let me tell you, number one, yes, I voted to save the jobs at Rose Cross. I had civic association presidents and communities that came to Annapolis and asked me to support keeping the lights on at Rosecroft Historic Institution. They've been there. They were afraid it would close and crime would, grow, crime would go up. Yes, I voted to keep them in the community. And number two, yes, I voted against the casino coming to National Harbor. They could have located many other places, but because the 26th District, those who live in Oxon Hill in Fort Washington, we met, and I represent them. They keep saying that it was jobs, but when I asked them to put in the legislation that a certain percentage of the jobs would go to Prince George's County, they refused, they refused to do it. They would not even sign a memorandum of understanding saying they would give us the jobs. In fact, Prince George's taxi cabs have just come this year. Every week they staged a protest and demonstration at National Harbor. Because with all the transportation, the limousines that were lined up in the, in the transportation were from Virginia, and they made Prince George's taxi cab sit in the garage. Wouldn't even let them line up. That happened this year. So, yes, why do you think people are in here from New York? They're in here because I'm not a yes vote. I'm not on their payroll like Veronica Turner is, and I refuse to work for them. She works for SEIU. I work for you. So here's what I want to say. 
when we come back, should you be elected me? I only have I've only served two terms. I've accomplished a lot with the help of the community. Compare my record to hers. She's been there for twelve years, and in the past four years, she's gotten one bill passed, and that was for SCIU. Number two, if you can't get a bill through, if you can't get a bill through the legislature, then what that simply means is that you have no ideas, and you're not taking back what your community is saying, and you're not making sure that the budget is moved so that it supports the priorities. In fact, if you notice, we continue to talk about jobs, and they talk about the wind bill. Oh, Senator Muse voted against the wind bill. The wind bill would have brought us jobs. But can I tell you something? They didn't tell you that the windmill was to be built and is being built on the eastern shore, on the eastern shore near Delaware. Now, I love the eastern shore, but... Don't tell me to vote for something that will tax our persons eight to twenty three thousand dollars a month on their Pepco bill to build to have jobs on the eastern shore as if Prince George's County residents are gonna drive from here to the very tip of the eastern shore near Delaware. Something is wrong with that. So having said that, let me stop for a moment. We have a question that came in, and the question is when can we expect to receive some service in, uh, on to roads in your neighborhood? Let me say this. I am a legislator. As a legislator, my job is to legislate on the state level. Now, when it comes to receiving uh, to, to that, we have had work done on the roads in our neighborhood, and the county council sets those priorities. My job is to bring the money back. Their job is to set the priorities and so we can we have received service on 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 uh on roads in our in our neighborhood and um going i'm going to continue to work to get that done here's something another question from one of our callers why are some schools in prince george's county uh all day and some half day for pre-K. Once again, we, we, we have brought money back and we're continuing to bring money back to work. We have a new school board. We have a new school board composition, and it's the school board of Prince George's County to make those decisions. However, I voted for and I continue to support and brought money back for universal pre-K, and it passed this year. So that this should this issue of why some schools are part time and some schools have time for pre K, this should be this will be addressed with the money and the priorities that uh, that we voted for. And let me say this: the casino will not bring back the money that we're talking about, no matter what people say. They point to Las Vegas. My wife was born and reared in Las Vegas, and it may surprise some of you to know that North Las Vegas is in foreclosure. They're in bankruptcy, the whole city. It, it's that money simply will not go and is not the savior for our schools. They've already are making, they're already making some changes to the law. For example, print, the 26th district was supposed to get all the impact money because the law that we that they passed said the 10 mile radius of the of the of the casino would receive the money. As you've been reading, there's now a push on our county council to extend it to 20 miles, meaning we'll get less money, meaning that if, as a senator, I intend to be reelected, and I intend to be reelected and go back and to make them stick to their word. Veronica Turner won't, wouldn't do that because SEIU will not allow her. Senator, we have a live call from Ms. Elma Thompson. Ms. Elma Thompson, you're on the line. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. Hello? Hello. Hello. I think she got the wrong person speaking now. Okay, I'm sorry. Who, to whom am I speaking? Rebecca Roundtree. Ms. Just, Rebecca Roundtree? I just spoke. Okay, so we, apo we apologize. And, and, oh, and, and, that's, that's and I hope that right. we answered your question. That's, thank you that's, so much. But thanks for calling. You're welcome. Bye-bye. I was waiting for others to call to, to um to call in and to take questions. I want I want to again remind you 
I have brought many jobs to the 26th district. We brought more money to our school district in the 26th district than any other legislative district in the entire county. Oh, I'm sorry, than the entire state. Of all 47 legislative districts, the 26th district, on our side in the Senate, we fought hard. We fought hard to build two $120 million schools. To build those schools, guess what? Those are jobs I knew would come here to our district. We brought back money to expand Fort Washington Hospital Center. Guess what? As they expand, that means because they do have in place a minority and local participation program, we will have those jobs. $110 million to begin the work on 210 because the work on 210 was put off. It was put off by the council. It was put off by the state, uh, by, the, by those who do highway administration. We brought the money back. State Highway Administration changed the priorities. I fought to get it back. But for that $110 million, guess what? That's going to be right here in the 26th district. Those are jobs. So we have fought for jobs. We have fought to make sure that our 26th district is a strong district. And we should not have people from New York. And when you look at what it says about them in the post, when you look it all up, what it says is this. They have been responsible for passing bad money. They've been responsible for coming in, overspending on candidates. Why do they do that? They do it because they want control. I will not be controlled by anyone. I will represent the people that I serve. I thank you so very much um, for this time together. I thank you for being on, and I'm looking forward to having a dialogue as we continue through this session. May you have a very good evening, and again, I thank you for calling.